combating nutrition disinformation and general bull. It's Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com. What's up, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to another Instagram Live. And we're here with another episode of Jimmy Rants. If you're brand new to Jimmy Rants, we've been doing the show for a few months. It's, get, it's catching on. A lot of people are loving it. But check it out, you guys. JimmyRants.com. It's a pretty unique show because we start off on Instagram. I do a couple of live videos a day over on Instagram. So if you're not following me on Instagram, go follow me there at Livin Low Carb Man. L-I-V-I-N-L-O-W-C-A-R-B-M-A-N. And once you're there, you can follow me live, just like all these awesome people are doing right now coming in. Thank you for being here, you guys. And then if you missed it live, you can actually watch the replay on Instagram for up to 24 hours, but then it disappears from Instagram. But never fear, we pop it on over to YouTube. So if you go to youtube.com and you just type in a keyword search, Jimmy Rants, you will find one of the 130 something episodes that we have done so far and counting. Finally, we do have a podcast for those of you that would rather partake in the information in audio form. Uh, I've been a podcaster for, what, 13 years now? 13, going on 14 years. And so I'm used to doing podcasts. So it's kind of fun to do this in podcasting format over on Apple Podcasts. It's called Jimmy Rants. Go find it. Go leave us a review there. JimmyRants.com, you guys, has all of the uh, information with links and everything about how you can access the show. Today's Jimmy Rants is all about the word healthy. So for our entire lives, when we heard the term healthy as it related to your diet, what were some of the images that popped in our heads? Vegetables, fruit, whole grains, lean meats, beans, lentils. A am, I, am I ringing a bell here? Is this what we've always thought of as health foods, right? For our entire lives. Margarine, really anything that's low in fat, anything that is, uh, includes whole grains, which they always have to do healthy whole grains. So it's like all one word, healthy whole grains. Um, Anything that's fruit or vegetable, unlimited. Have as much of that stuff as you want. Doesn't matter what the vegetable is. Doesn't matter what the fruit is. Fruits and vegetables, they're all healthy for you. Um, and then if you're going to have meat, have chicken breast. Have the leanest of the lean meats. Uh, in the past decade, they've added in, okay, have some fish in there as well. We know it's fatty, but it's good fat, so go ahead and do that. So that is what has traditionally been known as a healthy diet, okay? But keto is now redefining what health food looks like. And I wanna show, cause I just bought some of these on the screen. This is health food. I know it's a little hard to see cause of the glare, but it's a ribeye steak. This is health food. Butter is health food. Coconut oil is health food. Am I, am I ringing a bell here, anybody? Lard, which has always been mocked and scorned as, you know, it, it's an expletive when you talk, start talking about someone who has extra weight on their body, they're a, a lard blank, right? And I even still see it pop up in television shows. Uh, from time to time, we like to watch The Big Bang Theory, but we've watched a lot of different shows where they'll sneak in, oh, well, I guess you had too much lard, I guess you had too much butter, uh, you had too much meat because it's all gone to your belly. And so we have this distorted view of what healthy means. And within the context of a ketogenic diet, a lot of the things that are deemed as healthy are decidedly unhealthy. Think about it. Do you eat grains? No. Do you eat starchy carbohydrates? No. Do you eat sugary, high sugar, banana fruits and oranges and, and things like that? No. Do you have lentils? No. Do you have beans? 
No. So all of the things that we were taught, do you eat lean meats? Some people, yeah, but most of us, no, because we're trying to find the fattiest cuts of meat, a la ribeye steaks. So keto's redefining this, you guys. We're now seeing a new wave of people who are recognizing that health food does not have to look like what health food has always looked like. And we've fallen into the trap of thinking there can only be one kind of health food. Well, let's be clear. There is no such thing as health food, okay? Let's be very clear about that. Because depending on your goals and depending on what you're doing, one person's health food could be another person's detriment. Think about butter, for example. Butter can be a huge staple as a healthy fat in a ketogenic dieter. But if you are trying to eat low fat, a la Dean Ornish or Dr. John McDougall or uh, the China Study Diet or anything like that, butter is the devil. And so in one case, it is the best of the best health food. In another case, it's the worst of the worst health food. Okay? So I think we need to move away from these labels of food being healthy or not healthy, uh, foods being health-promoting, uh, weight-promoting um, versus weight-losing. I think we need to move away from that terminology and just say, okay, this is the food I'm choosing to be healthy. Now, I think we can agree upon certain foods that are never healthy in any situation, any refined carbohydrate. So if it's a refined flour, I don't think vegans, uh, Mediterranean diet, paleo, keto, none of us believe refined grains are a good idea. Same with refined sugars. I don't think anybody says, oh yeah, go, go drink up on that soda because it's got all that high fructose corn syrup in it and that's good for you. Nobody is saying that. So I, get, I think we can identify certain foods that are decidedly unhealthy. But keto, you guys, is redefining what we mean when we say health food and what it looks like for us. Are you finding that, that the more and more you get into keto and you understand it and you're doing it and you're living it and you're getting, you're thriving off of higher fat, lower carb types of foods? Um, before he went away, there was this guy named uh, Bob, Bob Briggs. Uh, he goes by the moniker Butter Bob on YouTube. If you haven't seen any of his old videos, the video that started him all off, and I thought it was hilarious when it first came out, was called Butter Makes Your Pants Fall Off. And so he's out there extolling the virtues of eating butter. And not, it was butter was the symbolism, but his point was higher fat foods in the context of a lower carbohydrate intake gave him his health back. And so he he, he did a whole video, and he's a Southern speaker like me. Uh, he said, butter makes your pants fall off. And he just goes down this whole line of things that that eating a higher fat, lower carb diet did for him. And he helped to bring in the minds of people that were redefining what health food looks like. So hopefully, if you start to hear those people that say, well, all that butter and all those fatty meats that you're eating in your diet, all that cheese, all that full fat ugliness is just going to go right to your fat stores. You can smile and just know that we are redefining what healthy actually looks like when it comes to food. All right, let's see what you guys have to say. Welcome in, welcome in. Hello, Bonnie. Thanks for being here. Uh, happy Saturday, master of my own kitchen. Thank you. Good morning. Finally catching you live, says Florida Bargain Diva. Welcome, welcome. Glad you're here. What up, Josh? Enjoyed talking to you on my podcast yesterday. Hey, Steph. Hello, Downtown Vapors. Lots of my usual suspects here. Thanks for being here. Diet King says, whole wheat bread. Yeah. I can't tell you how much of that stuff I used to eat, Adam, because I was under the false pretense that it was going to promote health in me. And I would always get the honey whole wheat because it tasted better because <laughs> they added sugar to it. Um, but yeah, how many of us ate whole grain bread? And I used to try to, I could never do rye bread. That's, that was just gross. But I would do the multi-grain, seven-grain bread 
And it actually tasted pretty good, but I, now in hindsight, I go back and look at the label. They put sugar in it. That's why it tastes good. If you ate actual whole grain bread, you would break your teeth. I don't think whole grain uh, bread actually exists. They have to refine it at least a little bit in order for you to be able to chew it. But yes, whole grain bread is definitely one thing that they always deemed as healthy. Wheat germ through my first pregnancy every single day set off the plate. Yeah, so again, anything that's a derivative of a grain, they always give the kind of health halo to. Oh, it's whole grains, so it must be good for you. Uh, ba -ba -ba, my favorite, ribeye, butter, and bacon. So, Bonnie, I am making these ribeyes. I'm on day four of my carnivore diet experiment, uh, keto carnivore, and I am making some ribeyes. Uh, and I will probably baste it in some butter. I don't know if I'll add any bacon to it because that's plenty of fat on there. Good morning, Nikki. Thanks for being here. Hello, hello. Alberto says, I used to put turmeric and pepper uh, for the anti-inflammatory properties um, for seasoning. Uh, does that, should be keto carnivore too? Yeah, yeah, turmeric and pepper. Those are just spices. Um and so I see no downside to most spices that you want to add to any any food, regardless of what diet plan you do. Although when you're low fat, you want those things because low fat takes away all the flavor. So you have to add spices to it to make it taste good. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. On a keto diet, on a carnivore diet, on really any diet, these spices could be a valuable part of, uh, of the diet. Three Tears for Keto says India has one of the highest populations of diabetes in the world, and many of them are vegetarians eating potatoes. Yeah, I forgot potatoes as one of the health foods. Uh, lentils, beans, rice. They got the ghee right, though. Yeah, they do have ghee right. Uh, ghee, for those of you that don't know, that's clarified butter where they have removed the proteins. Some people are sensitive to the dairy proteins, so they remove those so you can consume the fattiest part of the butter. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Good morning, Deb. Thanks for being here. Keto Chrissy Sue, look at some of the junk that's stamped healthy by the American Heart Association. Yeah, I didn't even get into vegetable oils, how they talk about uh, corn oil and soybean oil and cottonseed oil and all these canola oil, all these oils that are considered healthy and have the American Heart uh, Association heart health symbol on them, supposedly because they're healthy because they don't have saturated fat. Those things aren't healthy for anybody, anybody ever. They're highly, highly inflammatory. If you go look up on YouTube, and I talk about this a lot, but go Google, go look on YouTube how canola oil is made. Please watch that video because you will never, ever touch that crap again. It's disgusting. They have to use deodorizers and uh, all kind of stuff just to make it humanly edible. Why, why do they ever label that a health food? I don't know. And then call butter dangerous. Then call coconut oil artery clogging. Then say that lard is not a part of a healthy diet. Come on, come on. Uh, seven up tried to say it was all natural. Yeah. Uh, keto Chrissy Sue, all of these companies realize people are hyper aware of what they're put, putting in their bodies. And, um, and so they're going to pull out the stops. They say organic, they say all natural. Um, in fact, I, the thing, when I knew it jumped the shark was when I was in Costco one time and I saw on an end cap organic gummy bears. Organic gummy bears. So you look on the side panel, organic sugar, organic tapioca starch, organic maltodextrin, organic, and it was just organic gel. So all they did was slap organic in front of the word as if that makes it okay. No, it does not make it okay. Keto Chrissy Sue, Butter Bob went away. Yeah, uh, he hasn't done anything new in about three years. Uh, ba -ba -ba, yummy steak. Mm. That's going to be dinner later. Hope you're doing well, Jimmy. Thank you, Jumping for Keto. Appreciate you being here. Love me some butter, says Nikki. Yeah, butter is health food. I remember Dr. David Perlmutter when he came out with his uh, book, Grain Brain. He went on the Dr. Oz show 
and very famously told Dr. Oz and the audience there, butter is back. And I, I think every low-carb ketoer at the time just screamed, yeah! Amy, Marm, Brewster, I always wonder why the vegans have to make pretend meat if they are so against meat. Uh, is it possible that their body's craving meat so they try to fake it? Of course, Amy, that's exactly. Our bodies are primed for wanting meat. So you can be the best vegetarian vegan in the entire world, but at some point you're going to have to consume animal-based foods if you truly want to have robust health. It just can't happen without animal-based foods. Now, I know that's controversial. If you talk to a vegan or a vegetarian, they will go off on you if you say, say stuff like that. I'm beyond caring what they think about me and what they think about what I say, but that is the God's honest truth. You need animal-based foods in order to be healthy. You get complete proteins, you get vitamin B12 and all the other nutrients that you get from eating meat. At the very least, have eggs and or fish. But I think red meat can be an important part of just about every healthy diet. Hello, Deb from Canada. Thanks for being here. Country Croc put out a commercial saying it was made from vegetables, LOL, implying that it's good for you. Chrissy Sue, that's the other thing. Uh, all of these uh, vegetable oils that are out there, people think, oh, it's vegetable oil, so therefore it's from vegetables. And it's funny, Country Croc, and there's a reason they call it a croc, it, it's a croc, uh, said that their product has vegetables in it. It's because they're trying to promote that that's what the vegetable oil is, it's from vegetables. No, it's not. It's from rancid seeds. And the seed oil that comes from it is about the grossest, nastiest thing you could put in your body. It is about the most inflammatory thing you can consume besides sugar and refined grains is vegetable oil. So that is funny that Country Croc would do that. But again, look in their name. They tell you we're a croc. They're a croc. Uh, M. Cole 7408, fat doesn't make you fat. I tell people it's been the sugar and grains that make you fat. Yeah, unfortunately, people are still kind of slow to believing that. We'll keep banging that drum, boom, 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 until they get it. Keto Chrissy Sue said, yeah, the honey uh, whole wheat bread was the best. Yeah, because it was sugary. That's why. Have you seen the recent YouTube with Montel Williams talking about keto helping his MS, the real skinny on fat? No, keto healing coach, I have not seen that, but that's good to know. I know he went through the cancer um, and I know he was always searching for answers. I always liked him as a talk show host. Um, he seemed to be really engaging with his audience and his guests. And so I always admired that. And so, yeah, I'll have to look him up. If he's game, I will bring him on the Living La Vida Low Carb Show to talk about it. Keto Robin uh, says, my uh, morning fasting blood glucose was 85, ketones 0.6, been back keto for four days, will blood sugar come down? I'm not doing general questions, sweetheart, so if you will send me that question as a um, message here on Instagram, or you can email me livinglowcarbman at charter.net. Uh, we're talking on this Jimmy Rants episode about keto redefining what health food looks like. People try to do that on these Jimmy Rants asking general questions. Just know I, I'm not ignoring you. It's just we have a show to do. And so I'm happy to help you, Robin. Please write to me. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Amy Marm Brewster, bananas, apples, oranges have natural sugar. So that's good for you, right? LOL. Yeah, unfortunately, people, when you say sugar, all they think about is the sugar. They don't think about sugar that's in foods. And I would even take it one step further than just the fruit, which it's obvious that has sugar, primarily fructose as the sugar I would take it one step further is any food that turns to sugar in the body, which we know pretty much any carbohydrate has to be converted into glucose once it gets into the body. And so even the heralded vegetables, which has no sweet taste at all, can and will turn to sugar in the body. Now, obviously, the ones that are fibrous will have a slower impact on your blood sugar than, say, fruit would. So you eat a banana, that's 29 grams of sugar that you are just infesting your body with. 
Whereas if you have broccoli with some butter on it, the fiber and the fat that is uh, used with that broccoli is going to slow any rise that comes from that blood sugar. That's why that's a keto friendly vegetable because it doesn't rise your blood sugar as fast. It still rises, but just not as fast. So many people still believe grains are healthy. Yeah, Deb, they do because they're getting it reinforced by health professionals, doctors, dietitians, pretty much anybody uh, except for the alternative health people that now know better. I can now smell the sugar in things I never imagined would be sweet back in my sad diet days. Yeah, Crystal, the same. I'm the same way. Things that I used to think weren't sweet hardly at all, they're overwhelmingly sweet to me now. So I, I can't even have strawberries anymore. They're just way too sugary for my palate. And I don't eat much sugar at all, and uh, if at all. And so, and haven't for years. And so your palate changes the things that you think uh, when you were eating healthy before, oh, that wasn't very, you know, sweet to the tongue. Now that you're eating keto, a new kind of healthy, it's very sweet. It's pretty amazing. Uh, are spices okay on carnivore? Yeah, I, I'm not going to squabble over that. Diet King, we have to make sure this movement doesn't fizzle out. Remember how you were fighting for Atkins all those years ago? Stay strong, you demand. Oh, I think the keto message won't fizzle out. All keto is right now, Adam, is a reincarnation of the same kind of movement that we saw with Atkins, with the paleo community, and now with keto. I think there will always be a certain segment of the population that now understands the purpose of carbohydrate restriction. And where we've gone in our culture is to an abject fear of fat in the 1980s, everybody and their mama was scared of fat. It uh, rose uh, to prominence was, uh, what was her name? Susan Powder. Stop the insanity. And she was all about no fat. And she was always high energy and no fat. And so people had that mantra in their head that that's how you ate healthy. And I think with the advent and popularity of Atkins and then paleo and now keto, we now have this movement where people recognize there is harmful effects from eating too many carbohydrates, that fat probably wasn't as bad as we thought it was, and that health food is now being redefined in a different way. Used to health food was low fat predicated, high whole grain predicated. Now health food is becoming, at least within the ketogenic context, something that will not spike insulin levels, that will not raise blood sugar levels, that will keep inflammation levels lower. Those are all the things that are health food now. And that's things like butter. That's things like coconut oil. That's things like full fat ribeye steak meats and cheeses and eggs and all of the things that used to be forbidden on a diet, those are now health food. And we have to start calling them that. I encourage you, if you post on social media and you post some food, I want you to put hashtag health food. Uh, uh, hashtag bacon is healthy. Hashtag eggs are he whole eggs are healthy. All of these things people need to know aren't as bad as they thought they were. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Bonnie says, I have fibromyalgia, went on a pescatarian diet, which is a fish-based diet, which helped my pain and inflammation. Uh, love meat too much, went keto, and it helped as well. Realized it's the fat on both diets that helped lower inflammation. And I would say the lowering of the carbohydrates is helping the most with that inflammation. But yes, those fats are definitely helping. Uh, I will never eat canola again, says Chrissy or margarine. You shouldn't. Neither one is food. Get this, you guys. Next time you go to the grocery store, I want you to go to that section of the store that has the butter and the margarine and all that. I want you to pick up some butter. Okay? So pick up the Kerrygold, what, what, whatever butter you find. Turn it over on the side, and guess what it's going to say? Cream, comma, salt. That's it. And put that back on the shelf, or put it in your cart. Then pick up Country Crock or some other, uh, I can't believe it's not butter, but I can, uh, any of the margarines that are out there. Pick it up and you are going to see a laundry list of ingredients a mile long that they have to put in this to make it butter-like. And it's disgusting. Starting with 
vegetable oils. It's gross. Don't touch that stuff. Downtown Vapors, whole wheat bread and canola oil back in the day for me. Yeah, all of us did. And we used to think we were doing so good. So good. And I wonder how much more did it make my insulin resistance worse eating all that crap, all in the name of health. Because keto's redefining what health food looks like. All those things we used to think were health foods are now horrible foods. And all the things we used to thought think were horrible foods are now, in our eyes, within the context of being a, a keto, health foods. How do we get it so bass backwards, right? Uh, butter is life, says Chrissy. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Uh, someone I follow that is always fighting for better ingredients in our food still believes keto is not healthy in the long term, still believes grains are healthy. Well, Deb, everybody's on their journey. And some people get things right some of the time. <clears throat> We're actually seeing this within the keto world. A couple of prominent names. I won't necessarily name them by name, but they've been a little bit anti people being in ketosis over the long term. Um without really giving a reason why being keto for most of the time is bad. And yet both have contributed heavily to fats being healthy in the diet. Both have contributed heavily to why grains are a horrible idea to eat. But now they're dissing on ketosis. So I, I don't get it, but it is what it is. All vegetarian grain feed salmon, Alberto says. <laughs> oh, grain fed salmon. Grain-fed salmon, do they actually feed? No, I won't go there. Kitty Caddick, I saw yesterday a lady grabbing, I can't believe it's not butter product, while she was grabbing also 10 blocks of Kerry Gold. She had a face. What? How do you simultaneously buy both of those products? Unless, the only thing I can think of is, she's a blogger trying to show, this is what you don't eat, throw it away. This is what you do eat and then have 10 blocks. That's the only thing I can think of. Maybe buying for her mom who still fears fat. I, I don't know. That's crazy. Crystal says, my best friend is convinced calories in, calories out is the only thing that'll work. She loves frozen health meals. If you look at the picture on the front of those, the things are junk. Yeah, um, they're junk. If you look in the ingredients list of a lot of those frozen meals, the healthy choice. And I ate a lot of those back in the day. And who had the lean pockets? Remember, that was the low-fat version of the hot pockets, lean pockets. I used to love lean pockets, or at least told myself I did, uh, because, oh, they're healthy. Lean pockets, they must be healthy. I crave meat all the time. My two vegan friends craved it, especially when they were pregnant. Well, that's their body telling them they needed those nutrients for that little munchkin growing inside of them. Uh, my mom has dementia. I'm pretty sure it was her buy-in to the low fat all her life. Amy, she's not alone. A lot of the health things that Christine, my wife, went through were a direct result of her going on a low fat diet. She lost her gallbladder because her gallbladder stopped producing bile uh, or storing bile because she was eating such low fat. You have to eat fat in order for your gallbladder to work correctly. So she had to have it removed. She had, she developed three autoimmune conditions because she was eating low fat. There were so many things, mental health issues uh, where she had to be on Paxil for a decade. All of these things got better once she went keto, but low fat did that to her. And I'm sorry to hear about your mom. It's certainly something that's not uncommon, sadly. Uh, animals won't even eat country crock. Yeah, uh, Crystal, you're right. Actually, if you will do an experiment, you can actually take uh, a spoonful of margarine, country crock, stick it outside uh, on the ground, and then a spoonful of butter and put it out on the ground. Watch what happens. The ants will gravitate to that butter and devour it, and they won't touch the margarine. I have backyard chickens and I bet they would do the same thing. If I put margarine out there, they, and then they'd turn their nose up. But if I put butter out there, they would gobble it up. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, let's see. It's so great how you help us. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Chrissy. I'm happy to help. Is Greek yogurt a healthy food? Marie asks. So 
Thank you for asking that. Yogurt is another one that is given a health halo within uh, the traditional health world, but they're talking about Dannon that's got the fruit in the bottom and it's loaded with sugar. That is not healthy. Full fat Greek yogurt is healthy. So you got to be careful when you buy Greek yogurt because they have this ruse that they do with people where they call it Greek yogurt, but it's 0% fat. Or they call it Greek yogurt and they do 2%. No, Greek yogurt is going to be very high in fat and it needs to be plain unsweetened as well in order to be healthy. So again, they play these games, you guys, where they make you think something is healthy, yogurt healthy, and then they load it up with sugar. You've got to be a wise consumer. Kimberly says, health food is not the South Beach diet or Slim Fast. I laugh every time I see their commercials. So yeah, I've done uh, some previous Jimmy rants about how the South Beach diet now has a new keto program. And then Slim Fast has all these new products promoting keto. They're a bunch of crap, guys. Stay away from that. Hello, Lindy. Keto teacher mom says, the first day I went keto, I had bacon for the first time in years. My husband was like, who is this? Now he's cooking up great carnivore meals for all of us. So, Lindy, I just bought some ribeye steaks for my carnivore day four. 21 dances with dogs. Oh, yes, the bread section in the grocery now stinks yucky. Yeah, now it does. Coworker interested in keto. I wasn't the one who brought it up. Wow, that's awesome, Valkyrie. Um, and this is why I say live by example. Be there for when people start asking questions because they will. At some point, they will, and you will become their guru. Uh, I wish my sis who has MS would try keto. I keep talking about the benefits. Well, Crystal, people have to come to this. They have to recognize when what they're doing isn't helping them, isn't health promoting, and then they realize, oh, there's another way that is redefining what health food can look like. And then once, see, most guys can buy into keto because most guys like meat and bacon and, and things like that, so it's easy. Sometimes certain women who grew up with the mentality of low-fat diets, it's very hard for them to wrap their heads around how all that fat's gonna be healthy for them. But I wish you well trying to help your sister out. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Deb, I want to scream when I see someone eat what they call healthy, and then they have an A1C of eight. Try su suggesting low carb, but you can't push it, or they get angry. Deb, that is exactly right. The blood markers don't lie. And this is why I'm such a fan of people testing their blood sugar and getting regular labs run. Because if you don't know where you stand, then how can you know what you're doing is health promoting or health robbing? And so um, an A1C of eight ain't good. That person has type two diabetes and that person eats foods that they think are healthy, but is it improving their diabetes numbers? And, and doing it without medication. We talked about this on a Jimmy Rants the other day. The lady that was taking uh, an insulin-stoking diabetes medication, she went keto and her blood sugar was dropping to hypoglycemia. Guess what? It's because the food she was eating before was uh, covering up. The, the medicine was covering up the foods she was eating before. Now, that doesn't come without consequence either. You can't just cover up bad food choices but it was hiding the blood sugar effects that those foods were having. They told my dad to eat that crap. He still eats margarine at his doctor's orders, no butter, and he's had a heart transplant. Yeah, Chrissy, sadly, my dad had quintuple heart bypass surgery, and I looked at the sheet of paper they gave him uh, for what he should eat uh, you know, now as a quadruple or quintuple heart bypass surger uh, surgery participant, and it was disgusting. It was every low fat thing known to mankind. And it was so much grain, uh, blood sugar and insulin stoking foods. It was disgusting. And they're not recognizing that things that led to the heart attack and things that lead to type two diabetes and things that le lead to obesity and then cancer and dementia and Alzheimer's, they're all related 
to your nutrition. Every single one of them. I had no idea canola oil was bad for you. Haven't bought it since you told us a few rants ago. I would include canola with olive oil. I need an oil rant. Well, the safe oils are avocado oil, olive oil, uh, macadamia nut oil, uh, butter, lard, coconut oil. You stick with all of those oils, you're going to be good to go. Everything else, just kind of let it go. There's a few others that I could have thrown in there. Uh, flaxseed oil is probably not so bad and other ones, MCT oil. But at the end of the day, just stay away from man-made oils like the vegetable oils, canola oil. Uh, what can we dip in olive oil instead of bread? Whatever you want. I would put olive oil on top, and I did, on top of literally any food that I would consume. Uh, not right now because I'm carnivore, but as a keto dieter, uh, don't cook with it because it, it's not meant to be heated up to high heats, but you could drizzle it on top of salad. You could put it on top of really any food you want, top of some vegetables. After you're done cooking, just drizzle it with some vegetables. I love doing that with avocado oil, again, when I'm not eating carnivore. Um, drizzle that right on top of really any food you're eating. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Carnivore is agreeing with you. Thank you, Leslie. Appreciate that. I think the margarine lady was giving the carry gold lady dirty looks. <laughs> yes, probably. Oh, so I'm sorry, Kat. You were buying 10 sticks of carry gold and the other lady was getting the margarine. I got you now. So she was looking at you like, okay, what's that all about? Uh, her kids were judging me and my poor kids. <laughs> or her face showed me she was judging me and my poor kids. Wow. That's crazy, crazy, crazy. All right, guys, so the bottom line in this Jimmy Rants is keto's changing the world because we're seeing a paradigm shift happen when it comes to what people think of as healthy because traditionally what they've seen as healthy has been low fat, whole grains, um, non-saturated fat, fats like the vegetable oils, those kinds of things. Meats uh, are lean. Um, all of those things have been deemed healthy. Keto's changing the landscape. It's now flipping the script because now full fat meats, like these beautiful ribeyes I'm going to be cooking up soon, uh, cheeses, butter, coconut oil, lard, all of these things that we always thought were unhealthy for us are now health foods. And we need to be communicating that very clearly to people because they need to know these things aren't harming them. And the way they can test that is to run a bunch of blood markers, test your blood sugar, test your insulin levels, test your inflammation levels. All of these things will tell the tale of whether these things are health food or not. Let's see if we got any final comments here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I get dirty looks when I buy high fat foods all the time. Crystal says, yeah, and, and here's the thing. When I see somebody that's eating or, or checking out of uh, a line, I saw one in Costco the other day, uh, a lot of good keto foods in Costco, and he, and he had all kind of good stuff, coconut oil, and he had avocado oil. He had um, some fatty meats and non-starchy vegetables. And I said, you eat keto, don't you? And he said, yeah, how'd you know? I said, I can tell from what you're buying. Um and so, yeah, people are going to judge you still, but you're the one that's going to be sticking around smiling for many more years to, uh, to come because of the longevity that keto is giving you. So that's it, you guys, for this Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com is the website. We start off over on Instagram. Go follow me there, at Living Low Carb Man. You can actually engage in the content just like all these people did here today. Like Gay Trepes says, ordering at restaurants is the worst for getting dirty looks. I hate it. Well, I don't care what people think, so don't you. Uh, that's, that's the way you handle that. 
Uh, so at Live in Low Carb Man, L I V I N L O W C A R B M A N. You can engage in the content live. If you miss it live, catch the replay for up to 24 hours on Instagram. If you miss it there or you don't like Instagram, that's cool. No worries. We stick them on YouTube for you. Go watch them on YouTube. Uh, type in Jimmy Rants as a keyword search. You will find the show. And we have 130 something episodes now. So go watch the shows, the past episodes there. Uh, and then finally, we have a Jimmy Rants podcast on Apple Podcast uh, called Jimmy Rants. Do you imagine that? I think we're over 40-something episodes there now, which has some of the best of the best moments of these Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com is the website. So until next time, we'll see you then. <laughs>